This video is all about Ethereum. I'm going to explain what Ethereum is, what Ether is. I'm going to look at the similarities and the differences with Bitcoin. We'll also explain what smart contracts are and how they're a key part of the proposition that Ethereum offers. Do keep watching to the end of the video because we'll also take a look at some potential uses of applications that might possibly be run on Ethereum. If you're unfamiliar with Bitcoin or blockchain, you might find it useful to watch my video introducing cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin. Hello, I'm Peter Martin with Trading212, and we add educational videos about the financial markets, about trading to YouTube regularly. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you get to know whenever we add fresh content. Well, Ethereum takes the blockchain concept at the heart of Bitcoin and runs with it. It was born out of a desire to do something more with the technology than simply facilitate the existence and transfer of digital tokens. So let's take a look at the basics of Ethereum. So Ethereum is an alternative network to Bitcoin. Bitcoin's blockchain is maintained by a network of nodes, but it was only really conceived to do one thing, which is to support its decentralized native digital token, which is Bitcoin, of course. But there are some things that Bitcoin's scripting language can't do and was never intended to do. So Ethereum's network was designed from the ground up to improve on those limitations in the Bitcoin scripting language. So in some ways it's designed as an upgrade of uh, the Bitcoin concept. So it is a blockchain which has a built-in programming language. So Ethereum is the name of the network and the native digital token of Ethereum is called Ether. There are a number of parallels with Bitcoin. So Ethereum comprises a decentralized network of nodes, just as with Bitcoin and just as with Bitcoin. Digital tokens enter circulation via mining of new blocks in the blockchain. In contrast with Bitcoin though, where there is a finite maximum number of coins that can ultimately be mined, there is no maximum constraint on total Ether, though there is a limit of 18 million per annum. And developers can use Ethereum to build what are called smart contracts and decentralized apps or dApps. So to really get to the heart of what Ethereum offers, we need to have a little understanding of smart contracts. So let's take a simple look at this using a common analogy. An analogy that is often used to explain smart contracts is the vending machine. So here is our vending machine, and here is a buyer who is interested in buying something from the machine. To do that, he needs coins. Anyone with coins can operate this machine. It's open to anyone who has coins. And the machine can follow simple rules to execute its function to allow the buyer to purchase their goods. So the machine knows, for example, the cost of each item. So let's say that our buyer wants to buy a can of cola. The vending machine knows the cost of that cola. If he doesn't put in enough money to cover the cost, then it won't dispense it. If he puts in too much, it knows how to dispense change along with the item. So if he puts in the right amount or he puts in too much, then it will dispense the can of cola. And he has exchanged these coins for the goods. The vendor who set up the machine can come along later on and collect the coins in the machine. So in effect, the buyer has bought from the vendor, but without anyone needing to oversee the transaction. It's been automated by using the machine. So the vending machine here is operating in a way like a contract, an automated contract between the buyer and our seller. No one is required to facilitate the transaction once the vendor has set up the machine. So whereas we had the vending machine in the middle before, we now have our smart contract here in the middle. And just like the vending machine, it operates under a set of strict rules. Now these rules have been coded in and the smart contract will autonomously follow them exactly. But instead of accepting coins for goods, this smart contract manages digital assets and digital relationships. So the real coins would be analogous now to digital tokens, in other words, cryptocurrency. And instead of following rules about whether to dish out cola or not, this smart contract might accept tokens from our user here for 
a, a wide variety of transactions from as simple as perhaps transferring those tokens on to another person, a specific person on a given date, say, to more complex uh, rules, such as governing, for example, the subscription to a bond issuance. And then this buyer here, uh, they pay a certain amount. How much that was paid would be recorded by the smart contract. Also the identity of who's bought it, how much they've paid, allocating the security to them, the bond, and then perhaps also controlling future interest payments in digital tokens back to the holder of the bond. So let's say that we have two bodies that are looking to transact with each other. The conventional way this would happen is pretty much always that a third party would be involved in some kind of way to help facilitate the transaction. The idea with a smart contract, so let's say this is a smart contract in the middle here, is that we get rid of that middleman and we simplify things and possibly reduce the cost. So to run with the example I mentioned before, a bond issuance, um, using a smart contract could potentially simplify the bond issuance and reduce costs. First of all, you don't need a registrar, which would be our middle man as a third party. So no need for the issuer to pay the registrar. They save money there. Payments are also made on a peer-to-peer -peer basis. So we're cutting out banking intermediaries that could potentially charge fees as well. This now brings us back to Ether and Ethereum. The Ethereum network was devised to allow the easy development and running of smart contracts. So let's take a look at this in a simplified visual way. Here we have nodes on the Ethereum network, and there might be thousands of these around the world. Together, the Ethereum network is like a sort of self-sustaining, decentralized supercomputer. And all the nodes run what is called the Ethereum Virtual Machine, or EVM. And you can think of the EVM as being almost like a kind of operating system. Now here is a smart contract, a piece of logic or code that is executed in the EVM. Any changes of state caused by the smart contract are recorded in the Ethereum blockchain. The computational cost for running a smart contract is charged in what is called gas. And you pay for this with Ether. And very simply, the more a smart contract does, the more gas it costs and the more Ether you have to pay to use it. And that is basically to keep everyone honest. You can't just come in and hog up resources of the network without paying for it with Ether. The scope of applications that might potentially be run on Ethereum is vast. So let's take a look at a few of these. Theoretically, the sky's almost the limit in terms of potential applications. Some uses that have been suggested include voting in government elections, selling real estate, keeping records such as health records, issuing securities, and submitting tax returns. You might be interested to learn that the FCA, with its regulatory sandbox, which allows businesses to test market innovations with real consumers, has already trialed out some of these uses. And these can all potentially be done with the security, accuracy, speed, and transparency of blockchain technology. I hope you enjoyed this explanation of Ethereum. If you did, please hit the thumbs up button and give us a like. Or why not let us know what you think about Ether and Ethereum by sending us a message in the comments section. We do read each one. Well, that's all for now. For me, Peter Martin and Trading212, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.